Today I'm going to share from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 2. If you could read the scriptures together with me, that would be great. Shall we read together, hey? In faith before the Lord. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 2. Let's read together. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His word, love, and if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your word this morning. We pray as we learn to, Lord, understand your heartbeat, what it means to live as a united community. Father, I pray and I ask this day, God, that you bring revelation to our hearts, that you, that you would begin to even stir within us, oh God, that heart that would seek to say, God, we seek to honor you. We seek to glorify you as we walk together, flow together, live together, God, as a united community here. Father, we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. It's wonderful. You know, when I was uh, looking into this uh, part of the scripture, I, um, I was uh, just reminded many, many years ago when I was just, um, it was in the 1980s, 80, you know, 80s. 87 or so, 86, 87, 86, that's right. And it was, it was freezing uh, Melbourne weather. We, we were studying in um, Melbourne. My flatmate and I, uh, two of us, two females, uh, you know, rocked up and went, you know, walked about five, ten minutes walk to a, her boyfriend's place to watch World Cup soccer. You won't believe it, but that was our time. I only had a tiny little black and white uh, TV that did not have the, the channel that we wanted to, to watch. So there was this team, the Brazilians and the Germans. Wow, the Brazilians had a great team because they had very good players like Zico and the rest of it. And I was really interested to see what was going to happen during that time. It was 3 plus a.m. in the morning, okay. Now, th those were the days when uh, we were younger and uh, the things that we would do. And, uh, and then the, the Germans were, were you know, they, 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 so the Brazilians, let me get to that team again, they were having all this flair, they knew how to play the, the, you know, play the soccer and, and so forth, and it was exciting. But it was the Germans, they had the precision, they had the, the, the whole heart of flowing together, teaming up, it's a great teamwork. And at the end of the day, it was the Germans who won. And, uh, you know, when, when I thought about it, it just reminded me so much about the need to live in, a, in unity. God's heart is for unity. Say with me, unity. Yeah, so today I'm going to preach on living in, uh, as a united community. So here, I just want to bring to you what happened here in the book of Philippi, in the Philippians. In Philippi itself, as a, a city itself, here we have the background of the city. A lot of people, about 60% of them, were in that time, in Paul, Apostle Paul's time, um, they were peasants, farmers, uh, service providers, uh, the servants, and so forth. And, and then you have a, a minority of them who were um, basically um, veterans from the military um, service. And they and their families were given land in Philippi. And so this a uh, whole group of people, the Romans, as well as a lot of the Greeks, uh, they were coexisting together. The people in Philippi at that time, when Paul first went in, they had a blended sort of uh, religious worship, where they worshipped uh, the empress, like uh, Julius, Augustus, and Claudius, and they, they mixed it with the worship of Egyptian gods as well, and many other deities. And uh, so this was a time when Paul first came in to this land, um, the church was founded, this church in Philippi was founded on the second missionary journey of Paul, uh, as you can see in Acts chapter 16. And it's the first European city to be evangelized with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So 
One of the things that you remember as you read through the book of Acts is Lydia, the, the purple uh, cloth dealer. She and her household uh, came to be baptized together. They were like one of the first converts in that uh, church in Philippi. And this church here, as we look into the book of Philippians, is very close to the heart of Paul, Apostle Paul, uh, because you can see in Philippians chapter 1, verses 4 to 6, In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. So they are ones that would partner, flow in together with Paul to see the gospel touch many lives in that city as well. And Paul was actually, when he wrote to them, he was in chains, uh, in prison. But he said in Philippians 1.27, whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ that I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel. Here, Paul was encouraging the Philippian believers uh, to be, continue to be a shining beacon through their sincere faith in Jesus as well. Now, you know, with the church in, Philipp uh, in Philippi, they are all the different believers came from different walks of life, as I mentioned earlier, some from the peasant farmers and, and so forth, some from the military families and so forth. They're rich in character, personalities, giftings and talents. Yet Paul exhorted them to unite together under Christ as they live out their lives. Same today, even in our church here, in our Willowong Center here, we are people of variety people from different walks of life, different backgrounds, different cultures, different gifts, different talents that we bring with us, personalities and so forth. We have all different goals and interests, concerns, emphasis and so forth. Yet God's Word, the Word of God, reminds us again to live as a united community. And let that be translated. I pray today as I'm sharing this, that let that be translated in our lives, whether it be in our own families, our households, um, in our communities where we are, in our church, and let that continue to per be permeated even into your places of work and so forth. So, you see, the enemy Satan would seek to disperse. The enemy Satan would seek to disunite. But God comes to always unite His people. So I'm going to look at two key aspects based on Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 2 here, on firstly, motivations for unity. Let's have a look. Motivations for unity. It says here in verse 1 to the first part of verse 2, it says, If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any and compassion then make my joy complete when I was looking into this I am reminded of another similar passage of scripture in 2nd Corinthians 13 verse 14 that says may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all as we unite together say the word unite unite together you see, God's Word shows us the four motivations that brings us together as a family of God. God longs for His house. God longs for His people to come together in one heart, one spirit, where Jesus is the head of the church and we are the body. So let me share with you the motivations for unity. Firstly, Jesus grace I call it in verse 1 if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ you see we are able to acknowledge Jesus as our Lord and Savior because of the grace of Jesus Christ because of his grace you know because of his grace that by his grace we have been saved through faith yeah so here God desires us to come together, remember, reminding ourselves again, a motivation for unity, the grace that has been shown to us through Jesus Christ. No man can accomplish this, only Jesus has. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 uh, to 18, it says, For he himself, Jesus himself, is our peace, 
who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, dividing wall of hostility. And in verse uh, 17, it says, He came and preached peace to you who are far away and peace to those who are near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Galatians 3 verse 28 reminds us, There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. You know, because of Jesus, His grace that has been bestowed upon us, He continuously pour out His grace into our lives. It's an encouragement to us, His grace and His strength. It is Christ's grace that empowers us towards unity. It is His grace that lends strength and helps us, enabling us to unite our hearts. You know, so it's wonderful when we can see this. So this is a key motivation because of the grace of Jesus Christ shown to us, friends. You know, when, when we look at people, how do we look at them? Because by the grace of God, when we look at one another, how do we look at each other? Remember, it's the grace of Christ that brings us together. It's wonderful when they see the spirit of unity that flow in the church when all members would really let God's grace, the grace of Jesus Christ, pour out to us, strengthen us, enabling us, encouraging us to unite. And secondly, the Father's love and compassion. If you look in the scripture, it talks about here again, and the love of God, and the love of God. If any comfort from His love, you know, as we look into this, you know, our Heavenly Father, His love displayed, demonstrated through His mercy, demonstrated through His tender heart for us, demonstrated through, you know, just His care and concern for us. That's why in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 to 23, it says, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. Amen? God's compassions never fail. You know? And they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. This is an old, old song. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. May we remember the love of God that really draws us all together. You see, friends, sin separated us from the Lord. But because God loves us, He has compassion on us because he, wants, he, he is one who keeps to His Word. When you think about sin, sinfulness, wickedness in terms of corruption, immorality, disobedience, lawlessness, violence, etc., all these deserve God's judgment and wrath. We were once objects that deserve God's wrath. But because He loved us so much he paved the way because of his tender mercies he paved the way for us through his one and only son jesus who died on the cross for us that's the heart of the father for us that's why he, because of his great love it unites us together once we come to experience the father's heart of love and compassion he chose to do so out of love for us. Then, the Father's love should be a, one of the key motivations to draw us together. And I pray that you would really let God's love come and seep to your heart, through your heart, any parts of us that just needs the touch of God. The love of God can stir a person to keep unity with other believers. John 13 34 to 35 it says a new command i give you love one another as i have loved you so you must love one another by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another you know when when god's love touch us so deeply as a church as a body of believers and drawing us together you know what happens we learn to keep our focus upon him upon of the needs of the community around us, the needs of the world around us that needs to be reached and reached towards and ministered to with God's love. 
Friends, that's the power of God's love motivating us to come together as well. Thirdly, another motivation that draws us together, united, is that Holy Spirit's enablement. Holy Spirit's enablement is the work of the Holy Spirit, the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You see, when we become believers in Christ, the Spirit of God works in us. The Holy Spirit sanctifies us. He's working inside us out as we allow Him access. And He begins to, ch to change us inside out. He begins to move in us, transforming our lives, making us more and more Christ-like. A people that would reflect Christ-likeness. You know, 1 Peter 1 verse 2 says, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of, the, of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit. In 2 Corinthians 3, 17 to 18, it says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Friends, I want to encourage you, as each one of us continues to daily interact, daily connects with the Holy Spirit, He impacts our lives. You know why? His presence his power that is at work in us, His wonderful godly influence communicating and drawing us together in unity. It, you know, we learn to become more sensitive to the Lord. We learn to be, learn to hear afresh from Him. And by doing that, what happens is our hearts begin to be changed by the Lord. We respond to the Lord and for the sake of the Lord, we seek to unite. And that's the beautiful work of the Holy Spirit. This type of unity is internal. It's worked through as the Spirit of God in us, as we allow Him access in our lives. It's heartfelt, it's thoughtful. It's where we are willing to say, God, I may not have the strength, but by your strength, I'm determined to obey you. And this is where it works through from inside out. It's spirit-motivated, empowered, bonding hearts together in the Lord, minds and souls of God's children together. Let me show you a bag of marbles. When you look at this bag of marbles, you think about it. Yes, there are various colors, various sizes, composition, they're packed kind of closely together, but they are bound exclusively by that netting bag, okay, that little bag. If that bag was opened and was cut or ripped, the marbles will just spill out in all different directions because there's nothing internal that brings them together. But in contrast, if we look at a magnet placed into a pile of iron shavings, as you can see here, you know, by the very nature, the shavings respond to the power of the magnet. They are drawn together. You know why? It's very similar if I could put it this way, the Spirit of God brings us together. No matter how different we are, no matter how interesting, quirky, we may have quirky things, quirkiness, and we're unique and so forth, and, and all that, but it's the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, as we interact with Him daily, He brings us together. He changes our lives. And that's why I want to encourage you Let's be motivated towards unity. No matter how different, no matter what cultures we come from, no matter what backgrounds we come from, we are all brought, we are all of the same family of God because of what Jesus has done, what God has done through His Son and the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives as well. You know, and lastly, on motivations for that unity, this whole aspect of it, it pleases God's heart. Make my joy complete. Here, Apostle Paul was encouraging the Philippine church. Make his joy complete. And it resonates with the heart of God. Make God's joy complete when his people seek to come together. It pleases God when his people are motivated towards unity. It's like, you know, when we respond to God as he desires, it pleases him. It brings him great joy. And here you can see 
in Psalm 133, verses 1 to 3. I was reminded of this. It talks about when people come together in unity. It says, how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessings, even life forevermore. How good and pleasant it is when bre brothers dwell in unity. So I want to encourage you, four motivations. The grace that Jesus has shown to us. The love of our Heavenly Father towards us. The compassion that He you know, just showed to us. The fellowship, you know, the enablement of the Holy Spirit working in us. Just bring us together. You know, let that continue to work out in our lives. And it brings God great joy when He sees His people unite let that not just be in church setting but in our own homes we are all different in my home we have all different personalities and i thank god for that sometimes i wonder wow how in the world did this one come about then i felt the lord said to me to color your world and i said okay i am someone who is uh, pretty uh, focused and god or a goal oriented and so forth and and then i i, I you know, God desired to give, uh, bless me with a wonderful kid who is uh, very creative and does things interestingly. And I thought, why do you do it this way? Why not this way? But we move in unity. And he brings God great joy when he sees his people do so. You know, one of the things that um, I learned over the years as husband and wife, we are two very different individuals but by the grace of God brought together and in unity. I, I think one of the things I had to learn is to unite my heart together with my husband, especially when we travel. Okay, I'm a person who likes things planned out, and he likes to plan too, not to say that he doesn't like to plan, he plans even much more uh, than I. But I, I like it in certain pattern. And then I, I like it in such a way, if you go into a new city, this is me. I would love to see every part of the city in one day. If I one day, I will start from seven until maybe seven. You know, you go through everything. And uh, I, I remember saying to my husband, hey, let's start early, you know. And my husband said, if we start early, I'll probably need to have a holiday after a holiday. After a holiday with you. And I say, why? You know, we only have so much time here. So let's see. Ten things in one day, pump, 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 you know. At least I can say I covered as much as we could. And, my, and, and it came to a time when my husband said, your schedule is really packed. How about we see only five? I said, what? Five? And, and God had to teach me so much of this. And, and I learned, uh, thank God, by now I've mellowed down a little bit more. And I've learned to be wiser. Let's see a few things. I'm not as a uh, pom <laughs> I used to be. But you know, that's life. We learn in our own lives, in our family, in, in, you know, in the places where we work, in the community where we are. How can we shine for the Lord unless we learn to come together in unity? Yeah, then we shine forth and become His ambassadors in the Lord. Now, I'll share with you you know, as just as Apostle Paul shared all this with the church in Philippians, in Philippi, he established this, the motivations for the unity, but he continued to encourage them in verse 2. It says, Then make my joy complete by being like minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. It talks about pictures of unity. What does it look like? What does it look like? You know, yes, you call us, yes, Apostle Paul called the church in Philippi, be united, but he's also sharing with them, what does it look like when you are united? What does it mean in practical living? 
Yeah. So unity is to be lived out in practical life as a child of God. So this is where we go for. So firstly, what are some of the pictures? Firstly, like-mindedness. Like-mindedness. Say with me, like-mindedness. Like-mindedness. Here it says, make my joy complete by being like-minded. Being like-minded, it gives us an understanding where we actively seek to achieve common understanding and genuine agreement. A common understanding. You see, Jesus himself accepts us. He reaches out, he embraces all believers of different, different uh, uh, outlooks of life and so forth, despite them being so different from him. All of us are different. But yet, when it comes to Jesus Christ, he, he accepts us. So how do we look at another believer? And even though the person may be different, we do just what Jesus would have done. So, especially now, we live in a society that promotes freedom of speech and critical thinking, and that's fine. Yeah, there's freedom for that. Yet, we need to ask ourselves, does that freedom bring glory to God? What are the basis, what's the foundation where our thoughts and our perspectives, what are they formed from? What's the basis of our perspectives? What's the basis of our thinking? Are they based on God's word? For us to truly unite, we need to have a focal point. And I call this the book of all ages, the word of God, the eternal word of God that exemplifies truth and grace, the whole counsel of God. Isaiah 40 verse 8 says, The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of God stands forever. Amen? God's word stands forever. It's not just a word for that time. It's a word for all times, yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen? I want to encourage you, build your lives. As we unite together, build your families. Build your lives, your own personal life. Build you know, your, your family life and, and marriage and so forth. And, and all that in your own life as, as a working professional, and a working adult, and so forth. Build it on the word of God because it stands forever. So being like-minded does not mean that we all just become uniformed, you know, like uh, products of a cookie cutter, everyone the same. God embraces variety. We can still be different. God's values, our uniqueness, but our values and our perspectives based, are based on his word where we align ourselves, our values, our perspectives based on God's word. That's where like-mindedness come from. That's where it brings us together, you know. So I want to encourage us as God's people, like Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you will be able to test and approve what God's will is good, pleasing, and perfect will. Let God's word renew our mind. Let God's word align us to his perspective. Let God's word change us inside out. Let God's word make us people who are like-minded. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10, I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another so that there may be no divisions among you, that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. And so this is where Apostle Paul was saying to the church in Philippi, be like-minded. Let's work it out practically, not just knowing that we are motivated to be united, but let's be like-minded, work it out, live it out practically. Another picture of unity is resonating with God's love. It says here, make my joy complete by being like-minded. Then it says, having the same love. Say with me, love, love. So love, having the same love, resonating with God's love. You know, love towards God, love towards one another. Let that resonate with the very heart of God, reflect God's heart of love 
of care and concern because this kind of love godly love comes from a renewed spirit it comes when our spirit is changed by the spirit of god transformed by him so that we learn to see a person from the eyes of christ yeah when we look at another believer what do we see do we just see that person or do we see the righteousness of christ that covers over the person do we see god coming through for the person we then when we do that when we see the righteousness of christ covering over that person what happens is that we would learn to look beyond the differences we would look beyond the culture the nationality the social status the whatever differences but look at the fact that this is a child of god lord teach me to love this person the way that you love me that brings unity you see god desires us to grow into the image of christ's love he accepts as we learn to accept more and more of the household of god our brothers and sisters in christ you know why 1 john 4 19 to 21 tells us we love because he first loved us if anyone says i love god yet hates his brother he is a liar for anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen with his own eyes cannot love god whom he has not seen and he has given us this command whoever loves god must also love his brother yeah that's why god encourages us through his word his word transforms our lives and as we interact with the holy spirit he transforms our lives changes us inside out the grace that god shows us in 1 peter 3 verse 8 it says finally all of you live in harmony with one another be sympathetic love as brothers be compassionate and humble god reminds us again to have that same love to have that same love i want to share with you the story of cory ten Boon. now i know that some of you might have heard about her from uh, different preachers and so forth um, i believe we have a picture of a family if i'm not wrong oh okay all right never mind this is a this is cory ten Boon. this is part of a house uh, yeah that's the picture thank you so much and we have cory ten Boon, the the lady who's standing up there this is her, her family her family they are basically dutch in uh, uh in nationality and during uh world war ii their family uh were, were involved in rescuing and hiding uh, the Jewish people uh, from being captured by the Nazis of that time and the next picture shows you her home yeah so this was what you call the hiding place the book called hiding place they hid quite a number of Jewish people there and then brought them out of harm's way and so forth Corrie ten Boon it wasn't an easy life for her it was in 19, uh, 1947 um, after she spoke in Munich um, you know, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and so forth, she met up, met up with the very prisoner, uh, no, not sorry, met up with the very uh, guard, okay, guard, who actually imprisoned uh, the whole lot of them, they, they all, you know, he, this is one of the guards, and he did not recognize her. At the end of the service, he went up to her and uh, he said to her, you know, but since that time, I heard that you spoke about Reverend Brook because that was where they were in prison, in that concentration camp. Her sister and, and herself as well. But he said to her, but since that time, I've become a Christian. I know that God has forgiven me for the cruel things. They went through a lot of uh, very, very uh, you know, cruel treatment upon them. And he said, I did there, but would, I would like to hear it from your lips as well, Fraulein. Again, will you forgive me? He held up his hand to her. And Corrie ten Boon was struggling with this so much. 
And she knew that the Lord placed something in her. Forgive this man just as your heavenly Father has forgiven you. If you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. It was not just a command, but it was a daily experience. And she learned something as she looked to God and said, God, please help me to extend that hand of forgiveness. And she learned something. Forgiveness is not an emotion. It is an act of will in obedience to the Lord. Because here is this man. Yes, he was the guard, one of the guards who tortured them, who, who persecuted them, and, and many others as well, cruelly treated them. But he has now become a Christian, a believer in Christ. In other words, he is in the same family of God, and he is seeking for forgiveness from her. Though he did not recognize her, but she recognized him. All the flashbacks came all the time. And she looked to the Lord for help. And so she said, God, please help me. I extend my hand, God, you've got to do the rest. And she did. She did. And she felt just the warmth and the, the flow of God's love through her arm, touching her and clasping the hand of the guard, the guard and the prisoner together, grasping each other's hand for a long season of the time. And God's love just flooded. She cried, and so did the, the previous guard, the former guard. He cried as well, because God's love can break through the bounds of all that divides. That divides. God's love unites. You know, and it's not easy for her. It wasn't an easy thing. She had to learn. Later on, she remembered as well the reason why their place, the hiding place, was found out by the Nazis was because one of the Dutch people, their friends, amongst their friends, actually gave them the information. There was an informant. Later on, she met this group of friends and they denied any wrongdoing and so forth. It hurt her because it's like, it's, like, it's not just yourselves saving your own skin but the thousands the millions you know her family her sister died because all of malnutrition and all the cruel treatments uh, cruelties and so forth and she had to come back again to god the love of god because these are believers in christ as well and 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 she one day she told the lord god i have it in black and white the letters, it all shows that they were involved in informing the Nazis what was happening in our household. And God's love touched her heart again, melted her heart again. That very night, she burned those letters. It's like God saying to her, yes, you got it in black and white, but am I not the God who goes beyond that? Will you choose to forgive just as I have forgiven you? And she learned that. Brought unity again into her life with this one. Despite it all, God healed her. And through her life, she was one who showed so much uh, compassion towards those who have brought so much issues. And lastly, I want to share with you quickly the third picture the third picture of unity is in verse 2. It says, Make my joy complete. Being like-minded, being of the same love, and being one in spirit and purpose. It talks about one that is focused and we come together, oneness of focus and objective. You see, when we're willing to say, God, I want to ground my focus, my objective on the truth of your word. And Lord, I may have a different way of doing things. I may have a different approach and so forth. But if this is what you're calling us towards, God, I want to flow with you. I want to flow together with the rest, with oneness, focus and objective. No two Christians, no matter what the level of spiritual maturity may be, 
will understand everything, everything exactly alike. But if we operate with in Christ's humility and love, we would choose to say yes for the overall picture, for the purposes of God will flow in together. We'll go into this together. We will for the sake of the word of God, for the Lord himself, where we're intent on one focus and one objective. You know, years ago, not too long ago, actually, in 2019, uh, that was my second trip to West Africa, to Liberia, and that was also to Guinea. Uh, my, uh, my dear friends, uh, Doris, as well as Christine, came together with me. And previously, in the first trip, I was there with Doyin and Mijo. And we have this interesting, very interesting thing that we did. It's what you call the prayer and praise march. Uh, could I please have the picture, please? Thank you. Yeah, everyone, I mean, all the ladies would wear the same costume, okay? The white top, the green skirt, and the head scarf. And they also made me do so. And uh, you flew, you know, in, in, a, in, in a new place. Why? You, and, and I was asking them, why do you do this prayer and praise march? It's not just prayer and praise. As they praise, you've got to move with them. The Africans are really good. And I had to learn to dance along with them. It's not just, you know, for one hour. It was for four hours. Four plus hours under the hot sun of about 40 degrees and we were fasting water. Fasting food, fasting uh, water as well. And it was so, I was thirsty. It was all, you know, all the sweat and here you are dancing away, praising the Lord, praying. We're walking from the north to the south and the east of the west of the, the township to proclaim Christ and uh, inviting people for the crusade and the, the conference and, and so forth. And, you know, sometimes I'm coming from uh, Australia, I might be thinking, wow, why do you have to fast when it's so hot? You know, I'm thirsty as well. And then walk on, on the, uh, the, the dirt road. Wow, it's, it's a long way to go. And then you got to move as well as you, you know, do other. It's not just walking. And I remember the first trip uh, to Liberia when we did this in Foya, which is the city, uh, um, city between Foya and Sierra Leone. Um, they, we only had this, uh, they, they had to have all this, uh, what you call it, the um, uh, PA system, simple PA system, uh, loudspeakers. And it was all powered by the generator. And as the, the, the speaker in this uh, crusade and, and conference, uh, st straight behind this, as, the, as we put the generator into this four-wheel drive and he was driving off, all the fumes were coming out. And it, the first person that he hit was me. And I was like, wow, take it all in, man. Take it all in by God's grace, Lord. You know, I continued to walk with them, continued to pray with them. And everything, why? oneness of focus and objective we flow together and because there was such an anointing that came from that oneness and focus or a focus and objective god just moved incredibly there were so many lives people who gave their hearts to jesus people who were delivered and healed people who were it, there were so many things god did miracles after miracles and so forth but i learned one thing being like-minded, being of the same love, being of the oneness of focus and objective. These are the pictures of unity. I want to encourage us in your own households, in your own lives, wherever you are in your own respective communities, in our church, let's ask God, Lord, unite our hearts together that we may flow with you, that we may truly because of the grace that you've shown to us through your son Jesus Christ because of you know the father's love and compassion that you bestow upon us because of the work of the Holy Spirit in you know as we interact with him as as he works in us changing us inside out and it brings you it pleases you so much Lord it brings you great joy help us oh God I pray to unite us. Let that be our motivation and help us live it out.